and try to show you how to um, start doing the circle and the sphere in Julia and plotting some of the different maps we're going to learn about. So first there's something called iJulia, um, which is, yeah, it should pop right up. It's a way to um, to use Jupyter Notebooks with the Julia pro programming language. So first you'll need to go to julialang.org and download the newest version of Julia. And for example, if you're in Mac, you just click this. If you're on Windows, you click this or something else. And yeah. And then when you have Ju Julia downloaded, um, you can click on it. Like down here, I have Julia 1.6. So I click on it. I'll open up my terminal. And then I will have to do this. Oh. So here's Julia, I mean, here's Julia, like I can do two plus two um, and I can do other things uh, like the sine of 30, I don't know what that means. Anyway, so, but rather than doing all my programming in here, um, let's see, I could, it's, it's not ideal to do it just in this little terminal. So instead we use iJulia, so, you'd press this right uh, bracket on your keyboard. So I'll press it right now, and you'll see that this green Julia will change. And then I'd type add i Julia and press enter. And it'll install the package for you. Once you're done with that, you'd press back delete or backspace to get out of there. Then you just type using i Julia back when you're in the green Julia command prompt. Okay, now it knows that you want to use this package iJulia, and so I type notebook, and this is how you do it. I don't know why, and it should automatically, um, it'll do some stuff, wait, and then boom, and now you've got your files. Um, I already have some folders and things, so I'll, I'll start a new Julia 1.6 notebook. I did that a little fast there. Okay, so... <laughs> Just wherever you are, you can you can just start it right here, and you click New, Julia. Or you can sort of organize your files, like I made a folder called Julia Notebooks. I made some subfolders for different projects, um, for Lawrence Teaching, and then I did New. I should even like uh, organize this more. But now I'm here, and I could just say, well, what do I do? How about parameterize circles and spheres for video. Okay, now it's saved and it's called parameterized circles and spheres for video. It's green because it's on, or it's running. You can see up here I'm running a Julia kernel. Now here, if I type, if I press M and then enter, now I can say, like, type uh, different markdown things. Here we go. And get sort of like a, a narrative going in my notebook. It, the default is to have when it says in, like input, is now we have like a, something that will actually do computation for us. If I want to change this input cell, I click click on it and type M. Now it's a markdown cell, and I can press if I select and press X, it'll delete it. Um, and anyway, so here we go. So for circles, uh, the first thing we did was, oh, I'm trying to remember what we did. Oh yeah, just like the upper half. So like I could say my function f of t was, well, it should spit out a, a, a point on a circle. So it should have two coordinates. It's like something there and there, separated by a comma. And in Julia, you do use these brackets for a vector, a vector of numbers. And so what I would type is maybe t comma square root of r squared minus t squared. And I better tell it that maybe r is 2. Okay. And so then I'd have um, defined a, a function with the name f. It's a generic function. And so I could 
evaluate it at say like 1.1 and it should spit out yeah a, a point on the circle so this will be a point on the upper half of a circle of radius 2 centered at the origin and so if I can I can do this a lot of times like I can make a whole list of points and let's say let's do it for um, well first of all I mean let's recall like if I tried to do it for like 2.1 because I'm radius 2 if I try to plug in 2.1 you can imagine this will be okay it'll just put a 2.1 there but then it'll go here and it'll try, try to take the square root of 4, 2 squared, minus 2.1 squared, which will be a negative number. So it should complain, right? Um, so it even tells you, like, you can take complex number square roots, but you have to tell me, tell the computer that it'll do it. So anyway, but, it, you know, it can do other things, other numbers, it'll handle fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list of points. My list of points will be um, f of t for t in the range negative r by, let's say, steps of 0.05 to positive r. And that should work. That will give me um, a, a 81 element vector whose elements are vectors, namely these two vectors, these points in the plane. Now, I don't really want that. It's, it's more convenient for plotting to sort of collect them all. So I'm going to apply. So what you can do is just like this. And you know this just basically applies horizontal concatenate all the points together. So reduce points by the map horizontal concatenation. So like if I, if I had a vector a equals 1 comma 1, b equals 2 comma 3. Those are two vectors. Then what I could do is say h cat of a and b. And it'll give me uh, a matrix. If I had a third vector, c equals uh, 4 comma 4, then I can h cat all three of them together, and it'll give me them as a matrix. So this is, this is basically all I did. I did it to all the, the points. I took all these numbers between negative 2 and 2 at space at 0.05 between each one. I applied f to them, which turned them into a 2 vector, and then I stuck them together in a matrix. Now why did I do that? So the reason I did that is I'm going to use plots, and then I'm going to say scatter the first row of points and the second row of points, and please do that. So this was just a way, when I put them together into this matrix, I could then extract all the, the first coordinates and then all the second coordinates and feed them to this scatter function, or the scatter map, which is defined in the plots package. And the first time you use a package, it'll take a moment, um, but then when you use it afterwards, it'll be easy. Okay, so there we go. So there's negative 2 to 2. It gave us the upper half, just like we thought. If I changed it to, um, if I changed the definition to a minus sign, now f is a different function. I'll get a completely different, well, not completely different. It'll be reflected. So let's see. Yep. And now I get the, the lower half. And if we want, we can sort of get rid of the legend. We don't need this legend. And we can make the, the aspect ratio, the ratio of the scale to be uniform so that it looks more like a circle. And so that's nice. Now notice this now looks like the bottom half of a circle, but this map is very sparse near these edges and very dense here. So that's interesting. Um, we could, yeah, let's, let's even look. Let's say, let's define, so instead of saying f of t equals something, I could say right half of t equals something. So what was the right half? It was the square root of r squared minus t squared, comma, t. So that was our math. It spits out this 2 tuples. So let's try it on 1.1. Um, yeah, it spits out a number. And now let's try it on a bunch of points. So we'll do right half of t for t and negative r to r, except by steps of 0 0.05. 
So that'll give us a bunch of points. But now we're going to um, collect them by each catting them, horizontally concatenating them together so that they're like that. Why did we do that? Well, so that we could access all the first coordinates, all the second coordinates. Um, and actually, what I'm going to do is scatter bang will modify the previous plot. OK, so now you see, like before, we just had the bottom half. Now, on top of it, we've put the right half of the circle. And again, it, you see it's sparse sort of over here and here and dense there. So this is something interesting about our map. Um, yeah, OK. So if we, if we did minus there, what will happen? Now it will add even more points. So the, like sort of in the background, it's keeping track of this plot object and just adding more things to it. If I didn't want it to do that, I could remove the bang, and it'll um, do a new one. But then I can I have to do legend equals false, ratio equals 1, to make it look nice. But of course, this would not be the right half. This is obviously the left half, um, so I better change it. OK, so now it's the right half. OK, so that was one. Now let's do the trig. So maybe I'll say trig, uh, trig function now. OK, so let's say trig of theta. So how did I do that? I type backslash theta and then tab. And the tab button turns it into that. So like we can do phi. We can do var phi, which is a different version of phi. We can do all sorts of um, different, what else can we do? Like we do that. Oh yeah, even an integral sign. Um, anyway, so this is a very nice um, feature. So trig of theta will say is cos of theta and sine of theta. Okay, so now we've got this function called trig, and uh, we can see what it does to 1.1. Okay, it gives us uh, one and two coordinate a vector. OK, let's try the same thing. Points equals um, make a list trig of t for t in negative r. To, why don't we just do the same thing we did last time? OK, so there's my points. Let's collect them by h catting them together. OK, now we have them um, so that we can plot them. Scatter points 1, the first row, and points to colon. The colon is sort of like all columns. So this is the second row, all columns. If I did, um, I could put the colon elsewhere, but this is what we want. OK, so this is what we want because of the way I organized my points. I put them into a, this matrix like that. OK, and let's go ahead and remove the legend and put the ratio in 1 and see what it looks like. Interesting. Notice, I went from negative 2 to 2. So it did a portion of the circle, not the whole circle. I did you know, negative r to r, and r was 2 somewhere. So the, the program remembers that r is 2. If I type r, it says, hey, that was 2. Um, but now, and it's equally spaced. So this trig map is much different than our other maps with the square roots. Um, in fact, what we can do is go from negative to pi to positive to pi. Oh, we didn't have to do that. We can do negative 2 pi to 0. And we get the whole circle. Of course, the more natural thing to do would be to go from 0 to 2 pi. And then we get the whole circle as well. Um, yeah, interesting. It looks very nice and even. We could keep going. We could go to 4 pi. What will that do? Oh, interesting. By the way, yeah, so what we're doing with this, this map, this trig map, will just keep looping around, looping around, 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 forever. So we better only do it once. OK, um, and let's do the last one. So the last map was, what was it? Rational. OK, so um, I'll say 
rational function parameterization now. OK, so rat of t is, and I could do, again, I can call this f of t. Um, but why don't I call it rat of t equals, OK, now I can do this, what is it, like 2t divided by the quantity 1 plus t squared and the quantity 1 minus t squared divided by the quantity 1 plus t squared. But all these parentheses are pretty annoying. Now that would work, but I'll show you a different way. Function, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to define a function called rat of t. And now it's going to give me some more space. And I'm going to say the denominator that I'm going to use over and over again is that. And so please return. Uh, this function should return the value 2t divided by the denominator and 1 minus t squared divided by the denominator. And then I say end. And this is just the syntax for defining a more complicated function. This is a short, like a, a way to define a function. They're doing exactly the same thing, these two pieces of code, this code that I commented out, um, and also this code down here. And the difference is just I, when you need some more space, you can use this full function definition, like syntax. OK, so I've defined a function. And um, I could try it out. Yeah, it seems to work. OK, so let's, let's do our points. By the way, I could just do points equals reduce h cat of, and then now I'm going to put create my points list uh, and do rat of t for t in negative r 0 0.05 to r. Let's try that. So that's what I was doing before. So now I have my points. It should be a matrix already because I just did it all in once. And just to show you, like, here's the first row of the matrix. So look at the first row. Negative 0.8, negative 0.81, negative 0.82. And now look at this. Negative 8, negative 0.81, negative 0.82. So you see that this is pulling out the first row, this is pulling out the second row, um, and so that's just sort of what it's doing. So now I can scatter them. I need the x's and the y's, or the you know the first coordinates and the second coordinates. And why don't I make it look nice right away? And here it is. This is interesting because look, it's dense here. And then it's sort of sparse over here at the North Pole, which it, in my video I made a mistake and said that the North Pole didn't get covered. But it does. It's the South Pole that doesn't get covered. So let's, let's try to remedy this. Let's go from, two, from negative 2r to, to 2r. And now we get closer to the South Pole, and it's really getting dense. OK, maybe if we go from negative 3r to 3r. Still not at the South Pole. OK. By the way, I didn't even need to use R. I could just say you know, negative 300 to 100. Oh, it's really getting close. It Honestly, it looks like it got there. But it can't possibly get there. OK, so let's try it like, like that. OK, so you see I went from, to, from negative 40 to 20. So this negative side. This must be like the negative 40 point, and this must be the 20 point, um, because this one is closer to the South Pole. Anyway, um, like if, if we did rat of 100, you see it's not exactly at the South Pole. It's very close to 0 minus 1. 0 minus 1 would be the South Pole here. But it's not there. So if I did 1,000, um, it's still not. There, it's it's just not going to get there, um, ever. Um, anyway, even though here it already when we went to a hundred, hundred, it looks like it got there, but it really didn't. Okay, so, but the nice thing about this this rational is that I can take the like four fifths and get out an exact rational number, rational number. So you see this is a vector of rational numbers. The numerator and denominator are both in six, uh, they're just integers. 
Whereas, like, if I did four fifths is the same as 0 0.8. And so rat of 0 0.8 and rat of four fifths are actually the same number, like 40 divided by 41 is this 0.9756, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It should repeat, yeah, 9756, 0, 9756, 1. What? It shouldn't be that. It should be 97560, 97560, 97560. So that 1 there is wrong. It's because we're doing something called floating point. So Wikipedia, floating point. So floating point is, is the way computers do arithmetic, and it's it's not perfect. It's absolutely not perfect. Um, and so that's why you get, you know, errors. And you can see, I mean, it even, I didn't expect it to show up, but that is not a one. That should not be a one. But it is a one in my computer. Now, if I don't want any errors, I could use exact rational number calculations. In Julia, if you just do 40 divided by 41, it'll do a floating point calculation. But if you do 40 slash slash 41, it tells it, hey, I want this to be a rational number. Please um, treat all these things as rational numbers. Um, and it will. And it'll do exact calculations. So that's pretty nice. Now, if we, if we tried, like, and you see this rational map, it spit out rational numbers. What happens if I try the trig map on um, you know, 2 thirds, a rational number? It didn't care. It, it can't do it. It can't take the sine or cosine of 2 thirds. It's going to spit out floating points. So you can see float 64s. And so it's really a property of this map here. Um, where do we define map? Where we do everything we do is just multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Compared to these other maps that did square roots or did. Um, like, what was it, square root? There's a square root. Or they did cosine, sine. Oh, cosine, sine. I wonder I've, at which cosine of 1.1. I wonder what this does. Oh, cos of t. Special, if I click on this, what will happen? OK. so. Weird, interesting. So this is what, in Julia, every single piece of code, you can say, you can put at which in front of it, and it'll show you like exactly where it's doing that. And you see, this is the calc this is how, this is the code for how it calculates the cosine of 1.1, or the cosine of anything, really. And you see, it's quite complicated. Um, it's obviously, there's other functions it's calling here that are, obviously specialized in some way. And we could figure those, figure out what those functions are. But um, you know, calculating the cosine is hard. But this rational parameterization doesn't require that. It just requires division, addition, subtraction, uh, s multiplication, is squaring is a number times itself, et cetera. OK, so that's pretty good. Um, Maybe we'll do spheres in another video.